to do stuff. So we're out going for some sumac. The cones are ready. It's, uh, what is it, July, latter part of July, so it's kind of an early season for them to be ready. Quite often they'll be ready uh, like another two weeks from now in this area, which is Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, for those of you watching outside of the country. And uh, we're looking for sumacs, and you can see that's what all these are on either side. They create a canopy, they're so big. No cones up there, not that we could reach them anyways, because these are big male plants, so they're pollen. But wherever these are, the females are sure to be close. What do you need? You need a couple of pails. And you can rip them off with your hands if you want to be all savage about it. But uh, I like to use scissors, uh, a little less damaging to the plant. So there's way more sumac there, but of course very small. These are just juvenile plants. So there should be some females a little bit lower to the ground before long. Oh, I can see them already. Here we go. We are in luck. And you have to wait until after it rains because all these little sugars, they create that nice sweet flavor. And that citrusy, kind of a cross between pink grapefruit and raspberries. Um, it's all these little crystals that grow on these cones. And if you harvest them right after a rain, see them little crystals sticking out? If you harvest them right after a rain, it'll wash all that nice sweetness away. So you gotta wait until it's sunny for a couple days before you can harvest these. Oh, these are some really high female plants. Just, I'm gonna be able to fill a whole bucket right here easily. So, show you what to look for. Don't pick that. That's all dried, this harvested early or burnt or whatever. Uh, so you don't want that. You want it when it looks nice like this one here. So a good way to test if they're ready is, well I can tell they're ready already. I've just picked a few of them and my hands are already sticky. That tells you you're, you're heading for the good stuff. So when you want to test it, just grab a few little of these little seed berries, right, off the tip and uh, eat them up. Whoa, sour, sweet, citrusy, very pungent, very strong, that's how you know and they're very sticky, and the time of year is right. And it hasn't rained for a couple days. These are all things you need to watch for. I know everybody talks about poison sumac. Everybody thinks these things are poison. There's more people that think that you can't eat this, better off the species is, you know, because people tend to over harvest and get greedy and such. I'm pretty careful about who I share these videos with. I leave them unlisted many of the times, and I'm just trying to share with mainly indigenous youth and, uh, you know, other bushcraft people. People that got respect. Aren't they gorgeous? One of the reasons I like to use scissors is uh, you take way less branch with you. And uh, if you go to snap them off, sometimes you get a great big huge piece of stem and the stem gets cracked. And all that white foamy stuff that's in the middle of the stick is very bitter. So if you use your scissors, you won't make your juice or your wine sour with that stuff that's in the middle. So uh, yeah, check it out. We're just uh, in the bush here. Oh yeah, another reason I like to use the scissors is because, uh, you know, you're shaking the branches. You shake them less when you cut it, which means there's less of a chance of uh, ticks falling down on you. Uh, oh, look at that. These trees are endangered in Ontario. Wow, they ever look healthy. It's nice to see. I'm not outside of town or anything. I'm at the end of an industrial park road. So, yeah, you don't have to go far to get this stuff. It's very plentiful, it's not endangered. Got a goodly amount in there. I'll probably put a few more in there. If you fill up a container, half to three quarters full, then you can fill that same container the rest of the way with water. And uh, these are looking great. It's a great year for them. My hands are sticky as heck. Nice big cones and um, not full of bugs. Sometimes, you know, you go to a spot and a whole spot will just be overrun and these things will just be riddled with earwigs. <laughs> so these have got no bugs at all, so it's really great. Look at this guy, he knows where to get the vitamin C. Scram buddy, sorry I take your cone from you. This is coming home with me. Alright, I think I'm going to go to the next spot. I'm taking enough from here. 
you can still there's, see there's plenty up there. So, we're good to go. And uh, again, lots of these butternut, beechnut, endangered trees. I don't know if they're butternut or beechnut, actually, to, to be honest with you. I don't know which one they are. If you know what they are, let me know in the comments. But there's uh, quite a few of them around here, and I do know that whatever they are, they're endangered. And uh, this kind of wood was often called poor man's oak. The reason they're endangered is uh, these nuts would fall off onto people's lawns and uh, they'd smell really strong and lemony and pungent and they would stain the lawn and kill the grass wherever they landed. So naturally, everybody has to have nice lawns. So people just started cutting them down wherever they are and that's what resulted in them being almost extincted. I'll show you what I mean about snapping these off. When you snap them off with your hands, Look at that. This stuff, this white stuff in there, it's really bitter. So when you use your scissors, you can see that there's less of that white stuff to get into your water when you go to make your tea. Another good thing about this is that it's a good elder medicine, actually. It's very light, but very strong for the lightness of it. And what's different about this kind of plant is it'll grow in really rocky areas that don't have deep soil. So as a result of that, what happens is you get your main stalk, which doesn't ever really have a lot of branches coming off it. You probably know where I'm going with this. Walking stick, and what makes it an awesome walking stick is the strength of it, the lightness of it, and whenever it goes into the ground, it turns on a right angle right away. So if you take the time to dig it out, you're going to have a nice hand hold and you'll turn it upside down and you'll hold on to the root cut it about there you got yourself a nice walking stick for what are you I am sticky. Uh, I think I've got enough. It's, I think I'm going to make wine out of this. Yum. The good stuff. Hickory dickory dock. We got some squirrels munching away on that one. Awful green. He must have been desperate. You wait until they get brown. So every year you harvest the ones that matured the year before. Otherwise they're too green. Maybe that might be the next thing to do a video on. Pretty ingenious how uh, indigenous people used to, and still do, harvest these hickory nuts. All right, looks like uh, still lots of light left, which is good. You need to have, uh, you can't start making this at the end of the day because you need sunshine. You'll see later when I get home. But I got just enough time to get home and get these started and then the sun is going to brew it the rest of the way so this is why you can't be doing this just before sundown you got to have uh, you know a few hours of light left because it's the sun that's going to do the work for you it's what warms it up you don't boil water and put these cones in there it extracts way too much of the uh, oils and stuff it'd be like just drinking furniture polish or something you have to really brew it gently so that just the hairs on all these they, they end up uh, dissolving. And then you pour it off and strain it, and that's how you get your nice red sweet liquid. You just get the sugars. Some uh, um, uh, other recipes you'll see, uh, other videos, people say, oh, pick the berries off the stem. Well, that's crazy. Why, why bother doing that? Got someone with the car horn right behind me here. Gotta love that when you're making a video and you're talking to a camera and the person behind you Honks the horn, checking to see if their van is locked. Not once, not twice, but three times. I didn't think I looked that shady. 
this is the deck. I get lots of sunshine here. So I'm understandably all covered in ragweed, so don't scratch it and dig it into your skin and stuff. Just kind of hose her down. Hose down your shiny coat. And there you go. Put it to it. That's all you do. Fill that up so that it's completely full and submerged. And then we'll do the other one. And then you put it out in the sun. And this is cold water. By the time this gets warmed by the sun, your tea be ready. So there you go, we're all submerged. I got it right in the sun. You just kind of push the cones down. Oh, geez, already starting to get color. Yeah, this is gonna be a good, good year for this. Last year I didn't get out till later than I would have liked and um, I didn't get a rich deep red color. They're all kind of a little bit dry at that point so I'm happy about today. So just let that sit in the sun for a good long while. So it's been in there for uh, I don't know maybe a couple hours in the sun. It's really changed when you push it down you can see you can hardly even see your hands. It's getting that nice amber reddish color. So what I do is there and I just kind of massage them a bit. All right, so we're ready to uh, strain it the first time. First time I just like to use a regular old kitchen colander. I just use my brewing stick here to kind of hold it. As long as I don't pour it in too crazy, it'll stay awful heavy. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so we poured it. That's just the initial strainer. We're going to strain it with a better, better grade of strainer this time around. All right, so we've uh, used that strainer to uh, get you know the main chunky griddle out of it. Now we're going to pour it into the carboy with this finer strainer and just get all those little seeds out and stuff. Oh, look out, buddy! Wow, look at the color on that. Looking good. Welcome to the kitchen and welcome to my dirty, dirty stove. So uh, here we are. I take the time to boil my juice. I boil it. Uh, there's other things you can do. You can add Camp Dem tablets, which is like a, uh, a sulfite, like a preservative. It uh, is said to uh, extend shelf life as well. But I don't like using that stuff because I want it to be preservative and sulfite free. Um, so, all you gotta do to not have to put those chemical tablets in is boil your water to kill all the bacteria and the nastiness and the uh, native yeasts that you don't necessarily want proliferating. Well, boil it. No big deal. So, this is the yeast that I prefer to use. EC1118, the good stuff. It's actually uh, uh, chiefly a, uh, a champagne yeast, but uh, makes great fruit wine in particular. And uh, I just know how it performs. I know how it behaves. I know uh, what to expect at the end of it. So this is what I like to use. So I kill everything in it. Then I put sugar in it. And when it's nice and warm, you can dissolve the sugar in it easy. Uh, then you add your yeast, whatever you choose. Because different yeasts impart different flavors and different percentages. The list goes on. Almost forgot to mention, boiling also gets rid of all the chlorine and chloramine. So. We don't want that stuff in there. And I've had wine for three, four years and uh, open it up without using Campton tablets or any kind of sulfites, preservatives, and it's fine. So I'm pretty sure that's probably because I boil it and I'm very clean. I knew this one guy who was an absolute pig. I mean, this guy was like a human being version of pig pen. 
and uh, yeah, of course, he didn't clean up after himself. He said, I'm going to try my hand at brewing. So he brewed himself some beer, and he's like, oh, my beer is ready. He goes to drink it. What are all these white things? Sure enough, yeah. Grubs. Worms. He's drinking larva. So, you know, you can't be a pig and do this stuff. you got to be clean. We got it in that white bucket there, and I just, you know, I don't want to wrench my back holding that for a long period of time in there, so we're going to use gravity, just use my siphon. But before we uh, siphon the uh, wine into there, it's still warm, by the way. You want it a little bit warm. Reason is because it will dissolve the sugar nicely. So you got a full bag, as you can see. It is a full two kilogram bag. We're just going to put it right in. It's it, basically what this tastes like. It's kind of like pink lemonade. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid drinking pink lemonade. It's basically the uh, closest thing I can think of is what uh, sumac tea. They even call it sumac lemonade in the south because it does have that citrusy kind of flavor to it. So this is why we use a full bag. Get your percentage up too. Doesn't that remind you of the Sarlacc pit? Bye bye Boba Fett. Just siphon it. Good old suction power. Yup yum. Oh, that's good and sour. Oh, yeah, I'm glad I added that. Now, as that pumps in there, it is gradually going to fill. As you can see, it's already filling it. And it will stir around and dissolve up that sugar. If you waited till this got to room temperature and then tried to pour the sugar in, you're going to be stirring a lot. All right, now one would think it'd be kind of obvious, uh, but you know, some of you guys might be beginners, might be never tried this before, so I'm going to tell you. You don't put your yeast in. You want it warm so that you can dissolve your sugars, sure. But having said that, once that gets poured in there and gets stirred around, I'm going to leave it till tomorrow so that it gets room temperature. When you add your yeast, it's got to be room temperature. You try to add your yeast to it at this hot temperature, you're going to kill your yeast. A little tip. Um, you see, notice the uh, hole's kind of large. You know, you could get fruit flies flying in there. So what I do is uh, just sort of take a little bit of uh, paper towel and tuck it in there, and that keeps the fruit flies from flying in there. Get all that sugar dissolved. Then, just a matter of grabbing your airlock and just stick it in there. We'll let that cool off. When it's room temperature, we will then add our yeast. Okay, so it's been overnight. So now we have our wine all nice and room temperature. It is now safe to add the yeast. So let's do that. Just got to take out our airlock. Get it spinning. Get the airlock back in there. And wait. Months and months. Months and months and months. One little thing I forgot to mention. Um, sunlight will kill that yeast. I knew a guy who uh, brewed on a sunny day and it just never took off. And it's because the sunshine was shining right through the glass and uh, destroyed all this yeast. So I'm right by a window here, so I'm careful. So what you do is you just wrap it with an old towel. Another cool thing you can do is you can take an old t-shirt that's got the head hole, just drop it right over it. An old t-shirt you don't care about anymore. And you never know, sometimes you get this thing will bubble right over the top. So that's why I like to use a towel. Because if it does that, rather than go all over your floor, this will soak it up. And then it's just a matter of racking it. Racking means um, you take it and put it into another carboy so that you leave the bottom sediment. And this is how you purify it. You do that, you know, once or twice, two or three times, depending on how much sediment you've got. And that clears your wine. And uh, then you get it into the bottles and cork it. Easy as that. So that's how you make sumac wine. I know it's a long video, but guess what? All it costs is your time. What better thing to do on a hot summer day than to go out and forage for wild edibles? Keep you fit, get out and get some fresh air. It's the best way to go. And it does make a really good wine. If you don't want to make wine, that's fine. 
just don't add yeast and uh, put it in the fridge. Nothing will cool you down better on a hot summer day. And it's full of vitamin C. So for me, it'll just be a matter of uh, getting this into bottles and racking it. And uh, I'll have myself a nice batch of wine a year from now. Here's Dave. He knows how to do stuff.